Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. If you are interested in financial education, looking where uh, undervalued investment opportunities are, click subscribe, it's just that easy. Ride the commodity bull market up with me uh, and everyone else in our community. So today I'm gonna hit up diversified miners. I have a lot of money in diversified mining companies. Uh, it's actually probably one of my largest uh, original positions in these companies. I'm going over them quite a bit because I think they look pretty good from a chart perspective. Uh, they are pretty low risk. They pay very high dividends and the returns can be quite quite good over a 10 X uh, over the commodity bull market uh, from the bottom. Now, doesn't mean we're at the bottom right now, but they'll still return very well. They're not as volatile. Uh, they're a little bit easier to to stomach. And uh, the products that they that they uh, extract from the earth are very well needed going forward, especially copper, nickel, all these types of um, minerals. So I'm going to go over some of these companies. I'm going to go over uh, some of the minerals and some of the reserves of the companies. So these are the diversified miner companies. These are the ones that I am heavily invested in. <clears throat> so uh, I, why I'm in, invest heavily in the diversified mining companies, the companies that I'm talking about and are not limited to, South 32, BHP, Rio, uh, that's Rio Tinto, Vale, Norilsk Nickel, Southern Copper, and Freeport McMoran, McMoran or McMoran, however you say that. Uh, there's more than this. There's Glencore, Glencore. I just put some money into that too. <clears throat> so I, I didn't put that on here, but that's another one. And Anglo American Platinum, that's another company, A N G P Y. It's another company that I'm looking in and, and adding into. They have the reserves and everyone wants those reserves. And the only way to get those reserves will be much, much higher prices in order to turn on the production of lower ore grades. And one thing I want to touch on is lower ore grades. This is the declining copper ore grades over time. <clears throat> so uh, copper ore grade in percent for world and selected countries. The world is this orange line. So way back in the 1900s, it was around 4%. And we kind of declined to about 2% and stayed stable for at two percent for a while now we're going all the way down to about one percent and below uh, i know i saw recent figures this goes to like 2011 or 12. recent figures were uh 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 percent uh copper ore grade so we are declining 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 this is a yeah right here average copper mining grades in chile and we're declining 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 we're at 0 0.65 uh, in 2016 and they're still declining we're gonna need a lot higher prices for um, for us to turn on these low ore grade projects. So one thing I wanted to look at is who's got all the largest copper reserves? Because uh, usually if you've already got them, they're at higher ore grades, and they're already mines. And if if we're gonna to have to go over, if we're gonna to have to go after very low ore grades, the companies that already have a bunch of ore grades that are that are higher. Are going to make a buttload of money. So let's look at the ones that have largest copper reserves in the world. So here's a couple. This is the top one, two, three, four, five, six. Codelco, uh, Freeport McMoran, Glencore Production, BHP Billiton, Southern Copper, and Rio, Rio Tinto. Uh, those are the ones with the largest copper reserves uh, up here. So you could literally throw a dart at probably any of these companies and make a bunch of money over the next decade. Next is nickel reserves. I wanted to touch on nickel. So nickel is Vale, Norilsk Nickel, uh, Jinjuan Group, Glencore, and BHP Group. So any of these that are, are in both areas, like BHP Group is over here and BHP Group's over here, that's probably a really good one to look at. Same with Glencore. Glencore's up there. Yep, Glencore Production. That's another one that would be pretty good, I think, Glencore. Uh, and no, I like Norilsk Nickel quite a bit because they have a lot of nickel. Actually, I like any of these. You, you, you can't really lose on any of these companies. Uh, there's also royalty companies. That, that's another way to play this move. Um, I like EMX, Nova Royalty, NOVRF, Wheat and Precious Metals, Teuton, Teuton Resources, Ely Gold, and Sandstorm. And some of those have precious metals in it. Uh, I do hold a lot of the smaller royalty companies who are building portfolios of the next generation mines. But I, I just wanted to quickly go over this and touch on some of these these companies, I own a lot in these companies. Uh, copper, 
copper and nickel, I, copper especially, it, if that's going to be the new quote oil, if they're really going to try to go after this, I, I don't know how they're going to do it. I think <laughs> copper, it's going to take some time to bring online. And if, if they're trying to push this stuff by 2030, which is nine years away, I don't even think they can open up new mines in that time. So prices are going to skyrocket. I mean, there's going to be a big move on copper. And what I'm doing is I'm positioning for that move in copper. I'm getting my royalty companies that have copper in it. EMX and Nova Royalty are the two that I'm looking at. They are smaller. They do have a lot of new royalties that aren't producing yet. So they are speculative. Uh, these other big companies that have all the reserves that I was showing you and have nickel reserves, Glencore, BHP Group, Rio Tinto, Vale, these, these guys are going to kill it. I mean, they're going to crush it. Uh, so what I'm doing is I've got my money tied up in, in all those. They pay large dividends. The dividends can be 4 to 8%, somewhere in that range. Uh, so if you can, you can buy them, they can pay you, and they go up. Uh, so I, I see that as a, as a very good mix. Uh, they're not as volatile as some of the other companies. I mean, they're volatile still. They're not as volatile as some of these little junior companies. Uh, but they have the money. They have the reserves. Uh, and if, if copper were to go to 10 or $20 a pound, I, I don't know. It's going to go way higher than where it's at today. Uh, then they're going to make a they're going to make a bunch bunch of money a bunch of money. So I've got a lot of exposure to those co these companies because they've got the reserves, they've got the money, they've got the dividends. Uh, they've done very well. They've got the history, and I think they're going to continue to do quite well uh, when and if uh, copper goes way higher. Uh, it's going high right now. D don't get me wrong. They're going to be printing money right now. It's going to go way higher. Because if they're going to try to do this by 2030, if they're going to try to do this in nine years, there's not many, there's not many mines that are coming online. Ivanhoe is another one. If you guys, I know you guys like Ivanhoe, uh, that is a good company as well. And uh, I think copper is something that that's got to be in in a commodity portfolio. And if you don't have any exposure to it, uh, I think you're not doing yourself justice. Uh, copper is going to be used everywhere. We have a housing shortage. It's going to be used in real estate. It's going to be used in electric vehicles. It's going to be used in renewables. It's, it's going to come up everywhere. Uh, so copper is going to bridge us to this next, whatever it is, uh, renewable generation, so to speak, and and all, all these different electric vehicles. It's that's every everyone's going to go right at at copper. If you guys like this this content, give me a thumbs up. Leave comments below on what you guys think. Love to hear your opinions. Uh, and thank you for listening. This is finding value.